What up, though? And welcome to the Boss Up Ball Out Podcast, your home for organic debate about Detroit Lions news and rumors. It's your man, Kurt Steele. On today's show, we recap the Lions roster moves at the trade deadline. But please do us a quick favor. Like the video and share it with other Lions fans like yourself. If you enjoy the content, subscribe to the channel. We are on our way to 2,500 subscribers, and we are currently at 2,464. Now it's time to bring in my co-host, for today's show and you know most of the shows on the you know when we do the recording first of all man the ladies love him and the men want to be him it's the mate it's the ladies pet the men's regret you ain't seen nothing yet the highest player from the himalayas yak town's finest big huggy ll cool twins what's going on my dude yes sir uh, good wednesday morning i'm certain there's lots of guys that wouldn't want to be me at all Man, whatever. <laughs> I don't know none. I don't know none. No, no. I'm hey, looking at two know. of them right now. <laughs> yeah, I know who it is, man. He is the hardest working man in Jackson, Michigan. He's coaching kids. He's taking fights. He's writing rhymes. It's the Wolverine Lion. Who? who? Coach Mike Jones. What's going on, Lion fans? All right. So if you're new to the channel, if you don't know how we get down here, we look at Detroit Lions news headlines or takes. If we agree, we say they are bossed up. If you disagree, we say they are balled on. And we give our takes or reasons why we agree or disagree. No hot takes here, just natural debate and our true thoughts and opinions about what's going on with our favorite team, the Detroit <coughs> Lions. Now, let's look at the topics for today's show. Let's put them things up here. <laughs> y'all silly y'all silly all right um we got uh what zadarius smith brings to the lions defense did brad holmes do enough yesterday at the trade deadline and we have some more uh lions roster news to update y'all on so uh you know you see ll you know with the ear there but these are things we're going to talk about today so let's get to it uh I talked about it a little bit yesterday. So uh, before we get to the slide, all right. So the Lions finally got their that trade done for Zadarius Smith, a 2025 fifth round pick, a 2026 sixth round pick. The Lions get Smith and they get back a 2026 seventh round pick. Uh, but what does he bring to the Lions defense? Now I'm gonna kick it on over to Coach Jones, man. He's gonna tell us what he brings to. The Lions defense. Yes, sir. So Darius Smith brings a lot of flexibility and durability um, to the team. But his flexibility he brings is he can play that pass rusher on the outside or he can drop back a little bit like Derek Barnes. He can play that Derek Barnes type of role, but he can be a full-time edge rusher. Um, Darius Smith this year has five sacks and and uh he has uh, he has i can't remember how many pressures he had 26 yeah 26 that's that's very high that's very 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 high you look at the Darius smith and he's he's that bigger type of guy that play against the run game because he's 6'4 270 pounds so he he fits that mold of those big guys then you look at okay can he tackle in space, you say he plays good against the run. He has the body. Well, you look at him, and this year alone, he has 23 tackles, 15, uh, kind of, uh, you know, how they say, assisted tackles, and he has eight solo tackles. So he can play in between the tackles. I love it. Um, but then you want to move on to his 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 durability and his injury history. He really has a pretty clean uh, history. He he was drafted in the league in 2015, and since then, I don't want to miss quotes. So let me look here. He missed one game uh, his rookie year, uh, three games uh, his his sophomore year, and uh, two games his uh, third year, and that's about it. Besides the 2021 season. Uh, where he was injured, and that's that's it. And and what ten years so far playing, that is pretty damn good uh, for him to have that type of injury history. So we, that's not something that we need to be worried about, concerned about. Because I know a lot of people probably thinking like a fifth and a sixth round. Something wrong with him, man. 
something is wrong with him. No, man, he's a very durable guy, and the Cleveland Browns are selling. You know what I'm saying? They got James Winston at quarterback, man. Come on. They sell. Chill on James. Look, they chill. <laughs> they sell him, bro. They sell him. But he, he is also, like I said, he's a factor in the run game. He's not just a pass rusher. He is a factor in the run game, which means what? He's a three-down guy. Okay, so you know that, you know, they might have won the other pass rushers, but they probably won three down guys. They were probably third down edge rushers or, you know, or maybe it's, it's, it's third and long, you know what I'm saying, or something like that, passing down guys. So Darius Smith is a guy sort of like Aiden Hutchinson who can be on the field all three downs. I like it. Um, would I have chosen somebody else? Yes, somebody else was my first choice. I'm not gonna lie and sit here and act like Darius Smith was who, who I was wanted it? all along. Huh? Who was it? Uh well be outside of Max Crosby and Miles Garrett, who everybody wanted, I wanted Trey Henderson. Uh, Trey Henderson had seventeen yeah. and a half sacks last year next to uh DJ Reader. So I yeah. personally wanted Trey Henderson. Then after Trey Henderson, Darius Smith was my next choice. So, um, yeah, man, but other than that, man, I think the Lions did what they needed to do. I think they got the guy, the three-down guy who can play and who's there, who's durable, who has experience. He's explosive. He's a all-pro caliber type of guy because he's had more than 10 sacks in three seasons. So, um, you know what? I hats off to Brad Holmes. Hey, we always begging. We always wishing they do something. They can move at the trade deadline, and they made the most high – Profile move of the of the trade deadline. So, with that being said, man, how do y'all feel about this? All right, so I go first. I like how I'm, 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 I'm gonna let LL. He's he kind of stewing right now, so I'm gonna let him stew for a bit. <laughs> I, I <don't> like that. <laughs> All right, for me, uh, love the trade, man. Um, I looked at it yesterday, and I was like, the one thing uh, about his game that you didn't mention, and. and is that 6'4", 275, he also can slide in and play defensive tackle because he's done that too. So you can run some game with him inside, outside at, at defensive tackle. He's really versatile. Um, and, I, and I don't think that the Lions, we played great. And we were talking to off camera about DVOA and all this other stuff. The one thing I don't think the Lions could do was play the rest of the season without a starting caliber defensive end. Like we have guys that can fill in and, and, and play but we needed the starting caliber defensive end. That's what we got in Zadarius Smith. Um, is it the big, splashy name that everyone wanted? No. Right now, the way the Bengals are playing, I don't think if, – if the Bengals would have kept losing, they would have probably would have put Hendrickson on the trading block. But they're starting to win games, and they're like, we're not too far out of the, out of the playoff picture in our division, or at least in the conference. There's a lot of, there's a lot of teams with a lot of bad records in the AFC right now. They're not, they're not like there's not a lot of separation over there, so uh, I think that's the reason why. Um, and um, I don't, yeah, Mr. Eaton W's over there in, in, in Cleveland can stay over there. I'm glad we got the guy that we got mm-hmm. for the Lions <laughs> right. over here. So, all right, Ellen, I know you got something to say, man, about this trade. So, what do you think about the oh, trade? I'm, one I'm thing. what's up? One more thing I forgot to mention, one key thing I forgot to mention. I don't know how I even forgot this. His four highest sack totals came when he was playing that off uh, off the ball uh, linebacker. When he was playing Riley outside linebacker, his four seasons, he has 10 sacks, 12 and a half sacks, 13 and a half sacks, and eight and a half sacks, all playing right, right outside linebacker. Okay. Well, you know he's going to be on that right edge. That's where, you yeah. know, Hutch lines yeah. up. Yeah, and, well, he was uh, he was a right outside linebacker in the three four, so he was really yeah. an edge guy. But yeah, he yeah. was an edge guy. Yeah, but you look at what we play here. We play a, we play a four three in Detroit right now, so uh, it's kind of a hybrid too. So, but yeah. LL, okay, you I know you got something to say with your old Ignis. All right, that. man. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, just, <laughs> I'm just messing with you, man. What you got to say about I'm this trade? Okay, playing, oh, okay. Well, before we do that, man, I'm I'm gonna give you a, I'm gonna give you a. The, the the three quarter boss because of the fact that you didn't mention the part about him playing D tackle because you look at how he's yeah, matured in the in the game <laughs> and he he's older now and he's put that that more weight on his frame. Uh, we could kind of use him as far as some of the games we can play where you can slide Aline McNeil out to the edge and put him inside. That's a dangerous that's a dangerous combination when you can you know swap those two because that was some of the things early that Aiden Hutchinson was doing with Lee McNeil. 
or a couple of those stunts, especially in that Bucks game, came with the the game where they were running inside out with with Hutch yeah. and McNeil. So, yeah. uh, all right, what you got to say, LL? I don't have very much negative to say. I like it, man. Uh, you know, just, just, I'm gonna just uh, stay on the the Zadarius Smith of it all because we're gonna talk about the trade of it. Um, in a little while, but um, yeah, you no, know, you know, you know, I like uh, Zadarius Smith. Man, been a dog day where he's been. Um, this is one of those, even though he does have numbers, but it's one of those like if you don't really know, you can play Zadarius Smith. He ain't really been doing nothing. He been doing this. He ain't that kind of player. He ain't no Michael Parsons or something like that. And I'm glad I mentioned that name by the way because I, I forgot something about Michael Parsons. But um, you know, but no, Zadarius Smith is a is a is a good football player. Man, he will fit. And most importantly, we got him a little while um, to pair with Hutch. So, you know, I'm, I like it, man. You know, we kind of, you know, we've been expecting this over the last couple of days. It was a Sunday night. They said it's pretty much a done deal. Um, you know, I, I don't think this is not, it's, it's a decent trade. It will help. I like what you said, Kurt. Um, we couldn't go without somebody else. So we had to get somebody. Um, you know, there were other names that, you know, that, I'm certain anybody would have had wanted, but this is one of the names that we all, I feel like we all did want, was a Darius Smith. So, you know, no, uh, welcome to Detroit, man. Uh, you know, let's get it. Yeah. And one thing, very hard, very highly graded trade uh, by most <coughs> pundits. A lot of people saw this as a, you know, a winning move. And I like the fact that the one thing I say about the Lions right now is that even with Hutch going down, they continue to win. But I just, like I said, I don't think we could have continued on a trajectory because you look at some of the quarterbacks we could be playing if we get to the Super Bowl. You're playing, a, you know, and it, or if we get to the playoffs, get to the playoffs, you're playing a guy like uh, like Hurts and, you know, saying mobile quarterbacks like uh, Mahomes and and um, and Lamar Jackson. You got to have somebody who can set the edge. And right now, we're not really setting the edge in the run game. We're, we're getting gashed in the run game. The one uh, thing, um, what you because you mentioned the quarterbacks, Zadarius Smith, like however people feel about him, I feel like the quarterbacks know his name, and they got a you know mm -hmm. he's one of them. So they didn't just go get a pass rusher; they got somebody that right. can affect the game. And my bad yeah. for holding this up. Yeah, ask Dak about him. All right, man, like the video, share the video, <laughs> comment on the video. Ask Lamar about him. Get this content to more Detroit Lions fans like yourself. Now, <laughs> LL, you got this something to say? You know, I I, I saw this topic from you, and I was like, okay. Cause I always know how you do with when you get to saying y'all's friend. So what? <laughs> what, have you got, what do you got to say on your topic today? <laughs> Man, it ain't. It ain't. I'm gonna just say this off top. It ain't no beef, right? I just, you know, just want to have a conversation, Lions fan to Lions fans. Um, you know, so as fans, man, like are are y'all satisfied with that? Is is it was it Darius Smith the move to make? Is this the okay move? Is this gonna get us over whatever hump that some of us thought we had in our head or whatever hump that is really there? Whatever obstacle that losing our top three pass rushers, you know, uh recently, you know, uh even though Josh Pascal will be back, but you know, we still without Hutch and Marcus Davenport. So, you know, uh is this the is this comparable for that? Will this make up for the loss? I don't think it's going to make up for it, but it'll definitely help. Um, you know, another question out there. Uh, was there another move to make? Was there, and I don't mean like a name, you know, just a name, but was there another player, you know, was there another fit out there? Could there have been another fit out there? I won't say the guy's name because I thought, because I heard that as well, like right after I seen, well, it wasn't right after, but shortly after I saw the Zadari Smith stuff. Um, I saw, you know, rumors about somebody from uh, New Orleans. I'm like, oh, okay, I like it. You know, I think he's pretty good. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then somebody, uh, you know, I won't say somebody. Kurt was like, yeah, you know, he had some she uh, some stuff going on. I'm going to talk right, about well, it. <laughs> maybe, maybe that wasn't the option. Then. You know, I don't really know. You know, that stuff can get really tricky. So I try to stay away from that. So, mm -hmm. but yeah, you know, was there another move out there to make? Would, would you have made another move? Would you have pulled, you know, maybe pushed a couple more chips in the middle? Right. To instead of getting Zadarius Smith, maybe get Miles Garrett, maybe getting a Max Crosby, or just you know seeing what else you can get. I don't really know, you know, a name. Maybe like a or you know just a, a supplemental piece. I mean, like an Arden Key or something. I heard a lot of people want to say because he beat Taylor Decker a couple times, or you know, just uh, what's our man uh, from the Jets? You know, just was there another piece that we could have added? Already? Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, and I don't really want either of those guys either. But was there another move out there? And <clears throat> the latter, just um, you know, what is, what's y'all's feelings toward um, 
um, you know, post trade deadline. Again, like, are we, I don't want to say are we whole, but like, you know, are we uh, a Super Bowl team now? Are we the team that you think can win the Super Bowl now? Maybe we are, you know, uh, we don't have, um, I don't, just, I don't, hopefully we don't all focus on the names, but will this, you know, will this help? We didn't make a monumental move. We have a lot of players. You know, we see that the organization relies on the players and trust our players to play. So, but just post, uh, like I said, just as fans, like, are we okay with that? Are we okay with the with the organization's trust with the players that we do have? Should we have um, tried to go all in? You know, you hear a lot of teams, well, it's, it's kind of like double talk. Some people say, well, championship teams don't make those kind of moves. And then you see uh, um, KC go out there and do a couple backflips on people. So, you know, should we have made, you know, they made some really big moves, you know, at least to fit them, you know what I'm saying? So should we have done more of those types of things? But, you know, those are just some questions out there for y'all. All All right. So am I happy? Absolutely. Am I satisfied? Yeah. Um, I think it is what it is. Um, I I just don't think that Brad Holmes is that guy. Okay. I think that the Lions – now, do I think that the the Lions – would have made a second move, man. Okay, a couple of names were out there, and I was talking to LL about this. Uh, the two names that came up were uh, Carl Grandison from the Saints and Aziz Ojalari from the Giants. Now, Grandison had some legal trouble about, and he had to serve some time. Now, it, it wasn't recent, uh, but it was during his playing career. So, and a lot of people were looking at him like, yeah, I don't know if I'm going to bring him to Detroit because of the type of offense that he had. Um, and I'm not going to get into it because that's that man's business, but, uh, putting it out there, you know, it had to do with some, with, uh, some, uh, some, some uh, things with ladies. Yeah. It, 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 you know, I have, I have a wife, I have daughters. I mean, I have a daughter, I have grand granddaughters. Yeah. So, um, would you feel okay with that? Now I did ask a question like or to another reporter and I asked him, Hey, is it something that he has he gotten in trouble since then? Uh, he has not, but I just think it probably with having a, a woman owner that probably is something that Sheila probably wouldn't have went for in him coming into coming to Detroit. Uh, and you know, I'm not saying people can't be rehabilitated, but you know, have, having a a, a a woman owner and the type of offense that he he had to do time for, I don't think that that Lions would have probably brought him in. And then Ojalari. He kind of fits the same thing as like uh, Arden and Landry, and they even even with a Max Crosby smaller frame, uh, he will play the Sam in Detroit because he's only 6'3", 240. and right now they're rolling with Trevor du- uh, Duwaski in that position. Um, so looking at that man, uh, am I satisfied? Yeah. Um, if there's other moves that we could have done, maybe. Uh, but the one thing I will say, uh, the Lions are getting defensive line help back for the Texas game on Sunday. Josh Pascal and Makai Wingo should be back in the lineup. Uh, they return uh, could, you know, will help keep fresh bodies on the field. You look at that Green Bay game, a lot of the players had to play the whole game because of the fact that, or play the majority of the game because there weren't a lot of rotation, you know, pieces that were playing probably, you know, top level football. So, um, and there may have maybe another player to add to the rotation, not the defensive end position, but the defensive line position that I'll talk about in the next segment. So, and one thing I will say, you can't add too many players because you, you risk the possibility of messing up the team chemistry. Um, but MCDC did say that they may be looking at poaching some guys that are former starters that are on people's practice squad right now. So it may not, they may not be done. You know what I'm saying? So, you know, uh, Boogie Basham's out there. You know, he's he was a starting level defensive end. So there's other people mm. out there that the Lions could go out and grab. So, I mean, we'll see. But what you got, Coach Jones? Yeah. Um. Whew, so man, I'm on. I'm on. I'm on. I'm on. I'm, on, I'm, I'm man. I'm gonna give it. I'm gonna give it a half ball <laughs> stuff like like that. Um, because I am satisfied with the fact that they went and got the Darius Smith and look at the, what they would have had to give up for Max Crosby or Miles Garrett, and the fact that Trey Hendrickson was no longer on the trade market because the Bengals won, and I was hoping they lost. And I'm like, man, that ruined everything. Because um, if they would have lost, Trey Hendrickson probably would have been on the market. Um, so. Uh, now, was there another move to make? Probably. Probably. Like you said, uh, Carl Granderson, um, Aziz, Aziz Ojolari from the Giants, maybe even Artisan Key. 
um, put, could have pulled him out, man. Um, you know, or you know, we could have un, you know, un, uh, addressed the Chase Young thing again because you don't need that guy situationally. Um, so yeah, I feel like I wanted one more move just to solidify everything and to make it like we that team, but we're gonna get to the Super Bowl regardless. Like, we was already yeah. on that path to get to the Super Bowl, even without. Um, the Darius Smith. So with the Darius Smith, we going to Super Bowl regardless. But I got money on this, so it got to happen. <laughs> <laughs> I want. I want to say one thing is that um, it came up yesterday when I was watching NFL Live. Is that no team during this whole trade moves that happened, all these moves that made, no team gave up a first round pick. All thirty two teams have their first round pick heading into the draft, so no one traded their first round pick this year. So. It's looking like a lot of teams, are, you know, they're making moves, but they're not making these big – because you look at it, uh, like you said, the Chiefs are making the right moves for them. You know what I'm saying? And I think that Zazaria Smith was the right move for us because I don't I, I don't think that – yeah, because you add another guy, like I said, but you know how these guys about the culture in Detroit, about what, what how they want to get down. And if you add a guy who, who, ain't, who ain't cutting it or who's not buying in, you can't bring that kind of t- person to the locker room. Dan Campbell said that well, I'm not. I want to trade for a guy that we not we don't even like. He said right. that. He said that straight up. He said we ain't trading for a guy we don't like. <laughs> so so what he's saying? You know, yeah, I, <laughs> no. What I, he's saying is that I mean he's just saying that if that person doesn't fit the culture, they're not going to be in Detroit, and they're probably looking at these guys. That's probably one of the things that why Granison didn't fit. You know, they, they look at high character guys. You know. What you know, what they have on their roster, and you know, it's one of those things where they're like, "Nah, we we we'll keep it moving, man, and, and you, right. y'all can stay where I at." Hey, but like the video, I'm share the video. Dirt bag, my yeah, comment on the video. <laughs> I mean, they don't want. I ain't saying that everybody's choir boys, but they, you yeah. know, they want some, you know, guys with some, you know, good character dudes that you know can come to Detroit. You know, everybody ain't choir boys, but if you, but if you don't fit the culture. You ain't going to be here no way. So, like right the on. video, share the video, comment on the video. All these things help us get this content to more Detroit Lions fans just like yourself. Man, uh, we are on our way to 2,500 subscribers, man. So hit the subscribe button if you haven't done so already, man. Um, but we got some more roster news to kind of round out the show. All right. My man, J-Mo. J-Mizzy is back in the building. Uh, he is looking at, you know, he's his suspension is over. They've already made the exemption to add him back to the roster. So, uh, he will be back in the lineup for Houston. Dan Campbell will say they don't kick him out there. He's just gonna pick up where he left off. And the big thing is that his teammates ain't like ain't ain't tripping on none of that stuff that's going that went on with him. Um, and that I, to me, be honest with you, that that reporter at Channel Seven, shame on you, man. That's what shame on you, <laughs> shame on you, because that's a story that didn't need, didn't need to be reported. Snitch. And we're gonna leave it at that. All right, uh, player. And the the Lions held strong and were undefeated <laughs> during his absence. But I think that Jim, uh, Jamo's ability to stretch the field will pay dividends in that second half of the season. Uh, one player that we haven't talked about, Roderick Martin. We can talk about this. Quietly returned to practice last week. He's in his 21 day activation window from uh, injured reserve, and I'm ready to see what a slim down version of that dude can do in the second year. And I like I want to see what his tutelage uh, under uh, Terry Williams is like. You know, how has he grown in his, you know, unfortunately he had the injury in camp. So, you know, we haven't seen him yet on the field, but hopefully we can get him back soon. Um, and I just want to, you know, see what's going on with that cat, man, because I'm ready to see that dude in the lineup, you know, because he slammed down. I'm also I'm coming to camp. I'm like, who the hell is that? And, oh, that's oh, mm-hmm. that's that's big Roger. Yeah, you know, that's, he he. He big, but not so big as anymore, Project Martin. So you know, <laughs> he's he's still a mountain of a man, but he slightly ain't as less big, big Project. <laughs> yeah, slightly, slightly less big. <laughs> and uh, to close it out, man, Detroit had to make two roster moves to make room for Jamo and Azaria Smith to make the uh, on the fifty three man roster. So they waived uh, Abraham, Bo Plan, and defensive lineman Chris uh, Smith. And they probably they weren't going to be on the active roster for long because they really signed them for the <laughs> for dip for the Packers game. They got a couple of reps in there, but you know it wasn't nothing big. I don't know. I, don't, I think uh, both playing only played on special teams or something like that. So, uh, however, they both did clear waivers and they should return to the practice squad uh, this week. And um, one more thing, 
kind of didn't put on slide, but um, rumors are that secondary help may be coming too on depth because you got Emmanuel Mosley and if he oh. could be starting oh, yeah. to ramp up for return uh, uh. from injured reserve probably around Thanksgiving, a little bit probably maybe a little bit before, maybe a little after. Um, mm. Dan Campbell has spoken with him, says if he's doing better than he was when he before they put him on IR. And then, of course, you know that you look at that the the time frame for Emilio Mosley was around that Thanksgiving time because of, you know, look, of course, you know when the, when the injury happened. So, could be getting those two guys back real soon. So, um, just you know, let you guys think about what's going on with those roster moves that the Lions made. Yeah, Jam will come back from suspension. Welcome back, my brother Flash. Oh, he back on the <laughs> field, man, and um. He's going to do some things. He's not going to miss no stride. He's only going two weeks. He's been working with the team all summer long, uh, all off season. Uh, he's hitting strides. So don't worry about that. They're probably going to get him a touchdown on the first drive just to show y'all that they don't really care about none of that. Um, and also, Broderick Martin being close to returning is, is key because that might be one of the reasons why Chris Smith uh, was let go. Um, you know, they probably could have let some other guys go, but um, they let him go, which will let you know that Broderick Martin is real close. He close, close. Uh, I can almost, I can, I can, I can, I can smell it, man. Because Big Huggy been turned down to the violent savage, and I'm ready to see all of that. And uh, like I said, man, they had to let two guys go, and those are the two guys they picked. Um, you know, special teams guy, and the other guys probably being released because, like I said, Broderick is about to be back. So yeah, I like I like what you're saying, Kurt. I like it. Yeah, and, and you look at it, man. He was those two weren't along. They they were just like, hey, let's fill, fill out the roster for this game. <laughs> we can have enough bodies in case somebody go down. All right, what you got, LL? Right, right. Um, you know, yeah, I know uh, what it is with Jamo, man. Welcome back, um, Channel Seven News. A bunch of snitches, but, but uh, you know, Brad, Big Brad, man. That's uh, you know, that's my dog. I'm waiting to see him. Um, hopefully, uh, you know, um, he'll have a get to have an impact. And you had mentioned uh, Terrell Williams. I want to see. Well, yeah, of course, Terrell Williams. But uh, it's like they put him in a, in a perfect position because they also have DJ Reader. So, you know, you trying to not necessarily turn him into DJ Reader, but at least see what that kind of player does. And um, you know, you said uh, the two roster moves. This is a very petty thing, and I don't know if y'all know this part. You know, I hate ugly jersey numbers. So I'm, and this is my joke. I'm going to say they released Chris Smith because he was wearing number 90 and Zadarius Smith probably wanted to wear a 90 number. So I know that some guys, if they wear 99, they switch to like 66 or something like that. I hope he don't because I hate number 66 on defensive players. But, you know, let's just see what number he's going to wear. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Hey, if you don't do it already, make sure you follow the crew on your favorite social media platforms. My man, Coach Jones, does a great job with his Wolverine spoke tra- Sports Talk or on YouTube, man. So go check it out, man. You know, I post content from this channel on all of my social media platforms. And LL, you know what tomorrow is, man. It's Thursday, Thursday, man. But you got to get to his other Instagram page to see that. So, you know what I'm saying? Do a little, do a little research, you know what I'm saying? And check out his other Instagram page. Now it's time for, for a party shots for today's show, man. LL, what you got, my dude? Um, you know, I just want to say this, man. It's a good time uh, in Detroit. Just what this trade does, it just it makes everybody happy. You know what I'm saying? Everybody on TV saying ridiculous stuff. It's saying anything. I was watching, uh, it was something on YouTube. I forget which where it come from. I think it was uh, CBS Sports or something. It was or, um, whatever show that um, Shady McCoy is on. Dude was on there. I talked to somebody in the Lions, and they said we did this to beat the Chiefs. They didn't. You know they don't care about that. They just want to win games. But I, I just it just this just opens it up for everybody to become a Lions fan. Everybody can just say whatever stupid thing that they want to say. Um, people at work were just oh we fleeced them, we fleeced them, the the Browns and we did. But you know it's just is everybody's happy is the thing. You know what I'm saying is is everybody's up and everybody's feeling good about where we're going. So that's what this does more than anything. Of course we got a good player, but you know everybody's feeling good about it. Stop saying stupid stuff though. Yeah, that's the facility over on F- FS1. All right, what you got, Coach Jones? Yeah, yeah, man. So I just want to say, um, man, it's about time, and everybody should be happy. The Lions finally pulled the trigger and got the guy uh, that was able to be had uh, without giving up a first-round pick. Um, and it was on the trade market. We got the top guy that was on the market that was available uh, without giving up our first or multiple first-round picks, and it happened. 
we made the trade. Um, we probably wish for some like oh, one more, but that's probably us being greedy because we finally got a taste of it. But uh, we here, man, and uh, they about to make my bet come true, man. Give the boss up. <laughs> All right, uh, definitely. Hey, thank you for starting your day with us, man, on this hump day, baby, right here on the Boss of Fallout podcast. Your home for game debate about Detroit Lions news and rumors, man. Hey, have a good day at work. If you're not having a good day, don't steal the one else's joy, man. For my fellas, LL Cool Torrance and Coach Mike Jones, do your man curse still a favor. Whatever you're doing, like you got to boss up, ball out, and be the best version of you that you can be. This is Curse Steel, and we will holla at you real soon. Mm-hmm.